Looking for good in them pink ends. All the same now, has a Margie done in Parliament Street everything? Chairs, books, foxes, boats, pictures, and the old fender. Do you remember the old Arden fenders? Home sweet home. We had one of them around the fire when we were telling the ghost stories. And you remember the other things for hearing the year, but this is for talking through. This is a modern loudspeaker of about 1890. Will you bring that horse into the farrock, please? Horse number two to the farrock, please. Whenever I'm in Parliament Street, my mind is always full of Joyce Men and James Cavanagh's wine room, Fenians, the newspaper, the Irish people, the number 12, and of course the firm of Masons who are optical and instrument makers in Dublin 200 years ago. City Hall was originally built as the Royal Exchange. Before that, it was the Earl of Cork's townhouse, Richard Boyle. That's how Cork Hill gets its name. And before that, of course, it was the Church of Maria del Dam, founded by St. Lawrence O'Toole. Dame Street takes its name from the dam of the River Puddle that ran around Dublin Castle. Of course, the castle itself, the Bedford Tower, and the Statue of Justice were our back to the people, and Newcomen Bank. And beside Newcomen Bank in North Edward Street, the old clinic, where we used to get our teeth pulled out when we'd be sent as kids from school, that pulled the head off us. They were worse than the dental in Lincoln Place. We leave the castle in City Hall for the hidden Dublin, Copper Alley. Not a very exciting place today, but what history, what stories of those walls could only speak. Saul's Court Academy, the Jesuit School of Dublin, Father John Austin and Father Thomas Beta, educating men, women and children in Dublin during the penal times. It takes its name from Lady Alice Fenton, who coined copper here in the year 1607. Her husband Geoffrey was a big shot in Dublin Castle. The old granite pillars to protect the building. I wonder did they come from Darkey or Glan Cullen or Bally Edmund stuff. I don't know who the Dodger was, but you can bet he was a Dublin wit. Do you remember when we were kids with them granite pillars, rubbing them to take the nicotine off so the schoolmaster wouldn't see we were smoking butts? There was also another unfortunate girl, had a business premises in this alley. Her name was Darkie Kelly, and she owned a tavern by the name of the Maiden's Tower. She was a sort of a madam of our day. I suppose a fella could get more than drink in it. Darkie one night killed one of our clients and was taken to the gallows over at Baggett Street. Darkie Kelly of Copper Alley. It's not every day in the week I look out a half door in the heart of the city of Dublin. Do you know where I am now? Well, I'll tell you. I'm in number one Copper Alley, the home of my good friend, Paul MacDonald. This is the original door that some of the students went through on their way out to Saul's Court Academy. A hundred years ago, James Joyce lived in this house, but he wasn't a writer. He was a journeyman tailor. What do you think of that? 300 years old. Do you know, that old house should be preserved. And of course, they should break this down here and go straight through Copper Alley, because that's right through to the other part. And they should put plaques on the wall John Austin, Thomas Beta, Saul's Court, Lady Alice Fenton, and I suppose a plaque for Darkie Kelly of the Maiden's Tower.
coming out of West Essex Street into Fishamble Street. Of course, way, way back, there were two streets here. This part down towards the Liffey was known as Fish Street, and the top half was known as Shamble Street. Shambles type of booths, tents where they sold all the ware, because this was the market area of Dublin. So the two names put together, Shambles Fish, Fish Amble Street. And of course, it was in Fish Amble Street was the birthplace of Henry Grattan. Some say he was born in Rohini, but he was baptized in the Church of St. John the Evangelist, which stood where that building is today. And of course, in the graveyard of St. John the Evangelist Church was the grave of Molly Malone. And of course, the pride of Fishamble Street, I suppose, it have to be the Fishamble Street Music Hall, where Handel first performed his Messiah. are one of the oldest firms in Dublin. They originally made the railings for the Bank of Ireland and now they're repairing the same railings nearly 200 years later. How is that for history and tradition? Christ Church Place, the Lord Edward, famous for seafood, salmon, brown trout, Dublin Bay prawns. To tell you the truth, after reading that menu, I feel like a one and one I never could pass Leo Bordock's, but it's the best chipper in Dublin. There's a nice granite table there, Naomi. All the same now. Don't the pack chips very fancy today? Do you remember years ago when you get a single or a one-on-one? -on -one? It'll be in a newspaper. And when you take up a chip, you'll be able to read the news off the chip. But I think the printer's ink gave it a certain flavour in those days. You can't beat Rings and Ray. Well, this only goes to prove that a fella can still pick up a mat in Dublin City. What's your name? Claire. And yourself? Sharon. And yourself? Yvonne. Tracy. And Lorraine. And where are you from? Coolock. Coolock? Yeah. I'm from Fingers. And you're from Fingers. And what are you doing over here in the Liberties? Um, well, just the the markets market. take a while. You're going to Dovey Market, to buy a bit of gear? Yeah. You're yes, say yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah many's the good pair of boots Dublin. I bought there myself. What would you be buying? Clothes, mostly. Clothes. Clothes. Very nice. And what does mods mean? Wait, <laughs> it's a way of life. It's, it's a way, way of life. In the 60s. It's the revival from the 60s. Yeah, trying to go back to when I was a young fella. Yeah, that's And you nice. think that was the best time in Dublin? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, it wasn't bad at all when we were teenagers. But you are nice girls anyway. And any fella that gets you, the trouble here would be making up your mind which one to pick. Because they're all beauties in their own way. So it was lovely meeting you girls. I hope you've got good bargains now in the Ivy. Mention my name and you get a bit of discount.
St. Werber's Church, John Field, composer and pianist, born at Golden Lane, died at Moscow, baptized in St. Werber's, the 5th of the 9th, 1782. They say he inspired the foundation of the Russian School of Music, and there's a monument to him in Moscow, and not a thing in Dublin except that blue plaque on St. Werber's Church. St. Werber's was also Lord Edward Fitzgerald's favourite church, and his remains lie in the tombs below, while out in the graveyard is the remains of Major Sor, who captured him. O oh, my dark Rosaline, do not sigh, do not weep. James Clarence Mangan, Derby Square. Well, do you know that at one time there was a famous school here, the School of Derby Square. There was a great Irishman, a great poet, went to school here. Do you know any famous Irishman went to school here? Yeah. Who? Yeah. His dad. Well, I don't doubt your dad's a famous artist, but do you know any other famous artist one? James Very good. What school do you go to? Francis. Oh, you're a credit to the Christian brothers. Where do you go? Oh, you're a credit too. What poem now did he write? Um, oh. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh where King Carl is going to be? Oh, where King Carl. A working car was... Mate, did you, uh, was well, what about my dark Rosaline? Did you ever learn that at school? Yeah. What, what song do you know? Uh, Any Dublin song? Yeah. How about yeah. Molly Malone? Yeah. yeah. All right. In Dublin's fair city. You're not singing. down to Leo Bordock to eat a bottle of rats. <laughs> yeah, William, come on, quick, quick. <laughs> come on, quick. Come on, come on, quick. <laughs>